when you hear the name Lovett Williams, I mean, that name is synonymous with, with being a pioneer in the wild turkey world. You know, Lovett spent his entire career studying wild turkeys. His research has been and continues to be impactful to the field. As a young scientist, I, I looked up to the work he did and, and frankly, I sought to emulate the, the, the approach he took to, to turkey science, which was very thoughtful, very deliberate, uh, very rigorous. And so, I mean, it's kind of hard to overstate the impact Lovett's had on, on wild turkey science and conservation. He's gonna do back up there and he's gonna win. Well, let, let's go ahead and you end it. Yeah, let's go ahead and start it. And if it gets noisy, we'll stop, start over. Okay, I'm rolling. I started hunting at a time when the future of the wild turkey was in question. Uh, but there were plenty of squirrels around and, and I was quite a squirrel hunter as a teenager. At the time, though, nobody seemed to know very much about turkey hunting and, and where any turkeys were. And if they did, they wouldn't have told you anything about it. And so I was pretty much in the dark about turkeys until I got to be about oh, 17 years old and was doing some squirrel hunting out in a river swamp. That, uh, that had turkeys in it, and I knew it did because I'd heard people talk about it. And uh, I found some turkey sign one day and began to ask questions about turkeys. I found out that the way everybody hunted turkeys in northern Florida, where I was, uh, was by roosting turkeys. They would uh, sneak around the woods and hide near a good roosting place at sundown and hear the turkeys fly up and, uh, and then sneak in and shoot one out of the tree or come back the next morning. And I tried to roost turkeys for, for uh, weeks at a time. Uh, that first year I hunted turkeys. And uh, finally one night I got lucky and the turkeys flew up. I had gotten to my turkey hunting place on, on a Greyhound bus and with a shotgun, you could do that in those days. And I uh, gotten off at, in the countryside. And uh, when I got back on the bus uh, with that turkey and the shotgun, it created quite a stir among the people. And I got off the bus at uh, my dad's store and came home with him that night. My first turkey was a little old six pound hen, I would guess, a Florida turkey hen, immature hen. Uh, most beautiful thing I ever saw. And uh, that kind of got me started. In the years since then, we've been real lucky. The turkey has, has come a long way. The wildlife agencies uh, and organizations, such as the National, wildlife turkey, the National Wild Turkey Federation, have done a real good job. And uh, once the restoration methodology uh, was pretty well understood uh, for trapping and transplanting uh, full-blooded wild turkeys, uh, the, uh, the restoration was wildly successful. And now, uh, you know, we're lucky, I'm lucky, I feel extremely lucky, and I feel like that the future generations of hunters, uh, young hunters, will be very lucky in having the opportunity to hunt wild turkeys. Everybody who wants to hunt turkeys now in this country uh, can get to a place to hunt turkeys. Uh, people will tell them exactly where the turkey are. They don't keep any secrets. Uh, we've got two magazines about turkey hunting. Uh, there are 300 and some call manufacturers for uh, turkey calls, and uh, everybody needs to be a turkey hunter. But as far as young people are concerned, I think about that a lot, the future generations uh, and the way I came along. And I would highly recommend that they all become a squirrel hunter first and take up turkey hunting uh, as they grow into it, because many of the techniques are similar. But uh, hunting itself, uh, whether for turkeys or, or anything else, is, is a real blessing that we can do it nowadays. And I think it's instinctive. I think we have an innate uh, need to hunt or do something very similar to it. And uh, I'm not a football player or a tiddlywink player or anything else. I'm a hunter, and that's what I do uh, to satisfy that innate instinct I have. And it's very satisfying for me. The more research I conducted, about Lovett and his his life and his family and his career and and his approach to science, the more admiration and respect I've gained for him and what he meant to my ability to do what I do today. He forged a path that allows me to to walk the walk that I am taking now as a scientist and as a person and uh, I've discovered through reading and and talking to people about Lovett, his own family. Uh, how passionate he was uh, about wild turkeys, and, and you can see that in his you, in his writings. You can you can feel it when you read what he wrote about turkeys, but when you speak to his family, you 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 get a, 
a really complete um, appreciation, if you will, for the passion that Lovett had. Hey, man. Man. Y'all all turn around over here. Uh, Rob. Rob. Hey, come here. No, never mind. I got a picture. There you go. I'll get everybody in the picture. There you are. I got you in there. Okay, girl. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom, turn around. There you go. Thomas is in there. I have the honor of housing Lovett's library here at my office at the University of Georgia and going through that library and discovering photographs. One of the images that I found was his daughter, Heather, who I've spoken with uh, at length, actually imprinting wild turkeys uh, for some of the behavioral observational type work that Lovett was doing, which is incredibly interesting to me. And, and when I, I actually sent Heather, an image of her standing beside a hen that was had been imprinted, and she responded to me and said, "Yeah, that's that was classic Heather, barefooted and walking around with turkeys." And and so it it really having access to that library and snapshots that show the the intimate side of Lovett and his research has been quite rewarding for me personally to be able to to obtain that information, digest it. Uh, and then ultimately sh share it with others. When I step back and look at Lovett's career and the contributions he made, there are some things that really stick out to me, such as the work he did on the voice and vocalization of the wild turkey. That, that remains a seminal piece of information that has not been challenged or updated since. Uh, it, that is the authority on the calls of the wild turkey. and. And that simply speaks to the, the relevance and the impact and the rigor of that work, that it stood the test of time since it was, it was published many years ago. The best sound to stimulate gobbling is the yelping of hens. In the next passage, if you'll notice, the gobbler very often interrupts the hen while she's still yelping. And for that reason, he wouldn't know whether she was lost yelping or plain yelping. Another piece of work that, that's particularly been impactful to me as, as a young scientist when I was coming along was Lovett's book, Studies of the Wild Turkey in Florida. That book really encapsulates almost two decades of research that Lovett conducted. And the way that it's written is, is attractive to not just people like me that are looking at it from a science perspective, but, but also turkey hunters and the layperson. And Lovett intentionally wrote that book in that way so that people who are interested in wild turkeys but are not interested in, in hard science per se would still see relevance and value in, in that work. Lovett was the first to implement radio telemetry on wild turkeys. That, that innovation and that application of technology to wild turkey science literally changed the playing field. It, it, it provided foundational pieces of information that are still being collected today. So uh, in that vein, it's hard to overstate the importance of, of that, that methodology that he was the first to implement. Another contribution that, that Love had made to the, to the turkey world relative to capturing birds is simply the development of a, of a paraffin or a wax treated box. So basically he developed a cardboard box that's covered in wax that can be cleaned, repeatedly used. And these boxes are still used by researchers like myself to house turkeys after you capture go, them honey. at a capture site. Come here, girl. So you catch the bird, you put the bird in the box by themselves. They can sit down, they can be quiet. It's dark inside the box, it minimizes stress and it reduces uh, injuries in birds. And so this is something that 
that Lovett developed many, many decades ago that's still in application today. Lovett had a very um, direct approach at communication. He was able to communicate very easily to a diverse array of audiences. And you can see that in his writings, it, it's, it's crystal clear. As a scientist, you, you can obtain the information he's trying to convey. As a turkey hunter, you can still digest the information that he, that he published. And that ability to communicate with a diverse array of audiences is something that I recognized many decades ago when I first read his works. And frankly, it's, it's something that I've sought to emulate in my own career because Lovett was able to impact so many people with his science because of his ability to communicate.